we present the case of a patient with tricuspid bulb infective endocarditis. It is a young patient, intravenous drug user, without any important comorbidity. He presents new onset dyspnea, fatigue and asthenia. Laboratory analysis shows an increase of inflammatory parameters. Transesophageal echocardiography evidences vegetations on the aortic bulb and a severe aortic regurgitation. Additionally, a mobile structure arising from the eustachian bulb of the inferior vena cava as well as a severe tricuspid regurgitation are observed. Chest CT scan shows the presence of multiple pulmonary abscesses. The indication for surgery is defined by the presence of combined right and left-sided infective endocarditis with severe aortic regurgitation and concomitant severe tricuspid regurgitation. Due to the wide damage of the tricuspid bulb and the high complexity of the required reconstruction, as well as the concomitant presence of aortic bulb endocarditis with accompanying severe aortic regurgitation, we decided to perform a combined aortic and tricuspid bulb procedure through a median sternotomy on total cardiopulmonary bypass and under cardiac arrest. Additionally, as identified on the echo, tricuspid bulb leaflets seem to be pliable and susceptible of repair. Therefore, we primarily aimed to repair the tricuspid bulb. After beginning of total cardiopulmonary bypass, right atriotomy is performed for inspection. A vegetation is observed attached to the eustachian bulb of the inferior vena cava next to the venous cannulation site. We proceed to widely excite the vegetation and the infected tissue. We inspect the tricuspid bulb and observe a perforation to the anterior leaflet and, as well recognized on the video, there is one vegetation adhered to the free edge of the anterior leaflet. There is also a rupture at the insertion site of a primary cord. The other leaflets are not damaged and the annulus is not dilated. According to these findings, we chose pericardial patch leaflet augmentation with loop insertion as repair strategy. Initially, sutures are placed at the free edge of both ends of the anterior leaflet for orientation and then excision of all infected tissue is performed. Once sufficient tissue has been removed, a pericardial patch is trimmed as big as possible in order to increase the coaptation surface. This helps avoiding annuloplasty as foreign material should be ideally spared to prevent recurrent infection. In those patients with annular dilation in whom tricuspid bulb annuloplasty is being considered, we preferred implantation of flexible annuloplasty bands. Nevertheless, as intravenous drug users have high recurrence rates of tricuspid bulb infective endocarditis, foreign material should be avoided to reduce the risk of recurrent infection and therefore suture annuloplasty is the preferred alternative in intravenous drug users, despite being associated with high rates of recurrent tricuspid regurgitation. Once the patch is prepared, the first half is sutured to the leaflet tissue with a running suture until the corresponding commissure and then the second half is sutured in the same way but until the opposite commissure. Once the patch is fixed, we start with the implantation of neocords for improvement of leaflet coaptation. We use the loop technique to facilitate neocord implantation. After fixing the base of the loop set to the papillary muscle, Every single loop is then attached with a PTFE suture to the pericardial patch, paying special attention not to pass the fixing suture of the loop near the free edge of the patch, but leaving enough distance between the insertion side of the loop and the free edge of the patch, 
as this increases cooptation surface. This is possible because the morphological configuration of the right ventricle does not permit right ventricular outflow tract obstruction. Every single loop is separately fixed to the pericardial patch and then tied. At the end, fixing sutures are cut. The result of the valve repair is inspected and then water sealing proof test is performed to confirm valve competency. On the post-operative echo, a satisfactory surgical result may be observed. There is a good coaptation and mobility of the tricuspid leaflets with only trace residual regurgitation. If repair is not possible or if the final result is unsatisfactory, tricuspid valve replacement is required. Reoperation rates in patients with biological or mechanical prosthesis in the tricuspid position are comparable. Therefore, we prefer the implantation of biological prosthesis because lifelong anticoagulation may be problematic in patients in whom intravenous drug use is predominant and non-compliance is a major issue. In patients in whom implantation of a prosthetic valve is not desired due to previous multiple recurrences of, of tricuspid valve infective endocarditis, tricuspid valvectomy without valve replacement may be an alternative. Finally, our patient recovered without complications and was discharged one week postoperatively.